Here's a look at the wildfires from a national perspective. Right now, there are 413 wildfires. 249 of them are considered to be out of control. Already, more than 3 million hectares of land have burned, and at this time, 26,000 people remain evacuated from their homes. Jonathan Wilkinson is the Minister of Natural Resources, and he joins me now. Minister, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for inviting me. So we've had a very difficult May. It's a rough start to June, and federal data suggests this could continue right through August. The prime minister said, as of right now, we have the firefighting capacity. We need to deal with it. But what happens if things take a turn for the worse? Well, as you say, the, the forecast is uh, sobering. Um, it certainly is the expectation, and it is Natural Resources Canada that does the forecasting, that uh, we are going to see hotter, uh, continued hot weather, dry weather, uh, which creates the conditions for fire. Um, and, and so while you cannot say with certainty that this is going to continue or perhaps get worse, certainly the conditions are such that they would suggest that it is going to be a very challenging summer. We, uh, we certainly are utilizing all of the resources that are available. As you know, most of those resources are provincial, uh, the equipment and the people, but there is a coordinating center in Winnipeg that tries to ensure that we are using all of those resources and federal resources in as an efficient manner as possible, trading them across. The problem right now, of course, is that um, many jurisdictions are, are facing challenges. So we are going to have to continue to look at, at, um, at uh, how we can best allocate those resources. In the short term, we have been having international firefighters come in. Canada always sends firefighters to Australia and other countries when they have challenges. The same thing is happening right now, where several hundred firefighters from the United States, Australia, New Zealand, um, France and a number of other countries are, are helping us out. Yeah, I think it's about 750 when the 100 from France are, are fully deployed. And, and it, it's, it's great that your international allies or Canada's international allies can help. But when you look at the, the, the sheer volume of need, is there a need for a greater federal backstop of capacity? Because a lot of the provinces are stretched pretty thin financially. And when multiple provinces are burning all at once, there's only so much interprovincial co cooperation that can happen. Well, absolutely. And I think this government has, has recognized that. I mean, look, climate change is, is driving this kind of behavior. We, we, this is the new normal. We are going to see challenges on a go forward basis. And unless we actually start to mitigate emissions significantly, these are going to get worse. Um, and so the federal government actually has put into place just in the last few years uh, funds to be able to actually help the provinces buy needed additional equipment. Uh, we have put in place additional training resources. We have a number of uh, programs running with Indigenous communities that will be expanded starting uh, next year. Um, and, uh, and we are working with the International Association of Firefighters to actually try to address this interface between the wildlands and, and the community so that we are getting firefighters who normally are fighting structural fires to actually help us in that whole interface. And we are going to try to expand that kind of programming um, more generally. So we are looking to support the provinces and territories. We are looking to actually add capacity because we know in an era where climate challenges are, are going to be with us going forward, that we, we simply must. But when you say this is the new normal, I mean, does that mean you believe we're going to have to sustain this level of firefighting activity basically every year going forward? Because there isn't any cooling of the planet that, that anybody has in their projections, right? I, I mean, do you think this is what May and June could conceivably look like every year from now? Well, even, even in the, the context of a, a warming climate, um, it's unlikely that every year will, will be a year like this. But what scientists will tell you is there will be more of these kinds of years than there would have been in the past. Um, and, and sometimes they will get even worse. And that's true with fires, but it's also true with floods. And it's true with a whole bunch of other things that are driven by um, accelerating climate change. So um, we have to prepare ourselves. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves in terms of adapting to what is the new normal. I mean, we've been saying for a long time that we have to mitigate carbon emissions. And no doubt we do, because if we don't, um, we are going to make this problem even worse. But adaptation has become as important as mitigation. We are going to have to get used to the fact that these kinds of things are going to happen and we're going to have to be prepared to address them. That, that means we need to double down on, uh, on addressing the climate issue. How do we adapt, though, to wildfires, you know, especially when they're coming close to where people live? I mean, flood mitigation, you, you don't build on floodplains. We remap the floodplains. We change where we build structures. Hurricanes, you can build more resilient housing. 
how do you do it when it comes to fire, Minister? Because, uh, you know, the, the, the ten, I, I don't know if there's a way you could mitigate what happened in, in Tantalan in, in Nova Scotia. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say that, that, that it's easy, nor that there are perfect solutions. But I will say that, you know, the fire smart programming that the federal government has put into place is about trying to ensure that communities are thinking about things like um, taking away uh, the kinds of fuel that can make the problem in this interface with communities worse, so that we're not actually having all kinds of fuel that's lying around as you actually get from the forest into the community trying to actually create space between the forest and the community and, and ensure that you're actually cleaning up underbrush that can be um, fuel for these kinds of fires. And there's a whole range of other things. But it's also about just building the capacity on a go-forward basis that will ensure that we are as prepared as we possibly can be for the fact that these kinds of things, unfortunately, are going to happen. And I, I would just say once again, this underlines the importance of addressing the climate issue. And, and in this country, I think it's, it's uh, important that all political parties across all lines and, and across all jurisdictions are focused on figuring out how we actually manage this, both on the mitigation and on the adaptation side. Right, right now, though, a lot of the, the the spine of some of the firefighting efforts in the country are volunteer firefighters, and, and they there just aren't enough of them. And there's been an argument that maybe uh, tax credits uh, at the federal level could be increased to to increase the numbers of people who sign up for this. While in budget 2022, the government promised money to train a thousand firefighters over the next five years. Where are you on that? And, and should that and can that be accelerated? Well, it is. I mean, this is a, a big step into this whole area for the federal government where we're actually doing active training ourselves. That, again, normally is the provincial area. We have uh, nine different initiatives going in Indigenous communities, training firefighters. Um, I think there's 300 that actually now have, have been trained. That will be expanded next year to actually ensure that we are training more and more firefighters. As you will appreciate, it is important that we actually are providing people the appropriate training. This is a dangerous activity. It's not like, you know, when I was a teenager, they used to come and pick us up and put us on a float plane, send us into the bush to fight fires um, um, with no training. That's not something that anybody wants to do. But we do need to significantly scale uh, the ability to be able to call on, uh, on often volunteers that are trained. And so that's why the federal government has committed almost $40 million in the last budget to, to doing that. What about equipment like water bombers, just as a final point, Minister? I mean, is this something the federal government can buy and have in reserve? Uh, because, again, I go back to the scenario where uh, there's a crying need in multiple provinces at once, once and a limited fleet of, of, of water bombers that can be deployed. Yeah, again, I mean, in uh, in the budget just a year and a half ago, we committed about 250 some odd million dollars for equipment for the provinces that can be accessed and can be accessed even on a collective basis um, to be able to purchase water bombers and helicopters, but also pumps and a range of other things. So that absolutely is something that we have been talking to the provinces about. As you know, there is a central coordinating agency in, in Winnipeg that helps us to ensure that we are managing these things across jurisdictional boundaries. Minister of Natural Resources, Jonathan Wilkinson, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.